Hi everyone, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this. A CAT7 cable with an RJ45 connector shielded at one end and a Keystone connector at the other end, also shielded. Now, what I'm going to use this for is one of two things. Probably need to make another one even after this video. I need one that'll go in my rack from the distribution panel using this end over to a connector on the network jack down two shelves below my network rack. Also, I will need one that'll go in the wall between two of my devices that are basically going to share a connection between them and it's going to be a 10 gig connection. So we'll see which one I use this for. Now I'm going to show you all the tools that I use, the most important being this crimper tool. This one's particularly made for CAT7 and below. There's a setting that you have to do if you're going to do CAT6 or below and a separate one for CAT7. It's not meant for CAT8. CAT8 is something totally different. So those are not that easy to make, but we can make CAT7 cables. I've got my own spool of cable, this really thick indoor-outdoor cable with a, the capability of being subjected to the weather or going inside the wall. And uh, that's what I'm going to use for this purpose because I want it to be pretty strong. This is solid copper cable, so it's not something that you should use connecting up your computer to a wall jack, you know, a keystone jack in the wall. It's not flexible enough to do that, so I don't recommend that for that purpose. You would buy those, usually in a length of six foot, but I wanted to do this in seven foot. I also have a tester that I will be using to test the cable once I've made it. A couple of other tools, diagonal cutters, a screwdriver that you may need, and I have a box with all the different connectors that I have, the different RJ45 connectors and the different keystone jacks that I do. I have some in here for CAT7 and some for CAT6 or below. So with that, let me go ahead now and show you how to put one of these things together and test it. Stay till the end and you'll see it tested properly. Now before we get started, I've got to put this boot, this rubber boot. It's a particular size for these connectors that I'll be using here. So you gotta make sure that you have boots that match the one that you're gonna be using. They're not all the same size. Push it in, cable from the end, and push it down and push it back out of the way. And now we're ready to start putting the connector on the cable. Okay, I have all the tools for it. I'm going to start with the RJ45 end of it. This is an RJ45 connector for CAT7. As I said earlier, it's all about the shielding, so this connector has shielding on it as well. The first thing we need to do is peel back the outer insulation. This particular cable has a grounding set of wrapped around coiled wires right here. They are braided around the cable, so we have to pull those sort of out of the way, and then we will cut those off. Those are not needed at the connector end of it. But let me get this pulled back. I like to use the cutters. There are other tools to do this with, but I found this to be the most reliable. A little over an inch. I'll give myself an inch and a quarter. A little extra to play with is good. And it varies depending on how thick. This is a very thick outer plastic sheathing to it, so I have to really be careful how I cut it. Again, this cable was meant for being either indoors or outdoors, but it's not meant to be connecting up a computer to a wall jack. It's meant for a permanent installation within either a rack environment. You will see when I put the keystone jack on it, connected to the other side of the wall into a wall outlet, which is how this one is probably going to be used. Although it may wind up being used in my rack. I need cables for both. Now, once you look at this, let's get this out of the way, and I will cut these cables out. Don't need these wraparound wires. I like to make the sheathing cut as even as possible all around it. Makes for a neater job. Now, you'll see there's an outer coating. Most CAT7s have this, which wraps around all of the wire pairs. So what I'll do is this comes completely off. And then each pair, each of the four pairs, has a separate wraparound metallic foil. So now we will unwrap each pair, make sure I divide them up. The order doesn't really matter at this point. I can't see which one's orange and green, but it doesn't matter. I will unwrap each pair. 
but I want to keep the pairs separate. Now I got to be careful with this wire. This particular wire, it has a completely white one paired with each of the colors. So this one here that's next to the brown is the equivalent of the white brown. It's just this particular cable, not all of them do that. Keep that in mind. Do not mix up the whites. Let's unwrap this one. That's two of them, right? Then I got two more. Just sort of twist it in your fingers and it makes it come off pretty easily. Then we get the pair, we keep the pair together. And then finally this one here. So now we have brown, the green, the orange, and the blue pairs. I may have to switch the brown and the blue. They usually go together. But I'll do that as I'm putting it into the connectors. I don't want to mix the whites up. Remember, keep the whites separate. Now let me go ahead and cut off these individual little folds. These individual little foil wrappers. Because they're going to just get in the way. I don't need all of them there. Without mixing the wires up, of course. I'll leave the main wrapper here for now. I'll show you how I'm going to use that in a minute. Make sure you don't mix the wires up. And now we have the four pairs separated. Now these RJ45 connectors have two pieces to them. The main body of it, and then there's a little plastic wire guide. And if you look very carefully at the wire guide, you will see one end is mostly open, and then the other end, it brings the wire tips right up to the edge. So you've got to put them in through this end here, in the pairs, they're, they're sort of offset as they go in there. So you have to put each one of them in, in pairs, based upon, in my case, I keep handy the actual instructions for the different ways of wiring them. The most common way is the 568-B standard, showing this is the wires and how they go. Matter of fact, that's depicted here with a close-up shot as well. So I'm going to follow that one. You, it doesn't really matter which one you follow, as long as you're consistent at both ends of the cable, but this has become pretty much the de facto one that most people will use. So we'll stick with that, and we will follow the wire scheme. We need to start with the orange and the white orange. The white orange goes in first. Now, you've got to look at this picture here, and you'll see how this is oriented. So the white and the white orange with the holder held in this position here, the white and the white orange go in the two end ones over there. So they're the first two that go into this little holder. So we'll do the white, and you'll see the little holes that match up for it. If you look very carefully in there, we'll put the white and the white orange right next to each other. Be careful, they slip out very easily. But they should be both next to each other in diagonal holes from each other. Okay, so we got those two. And I will bend them a little bit at the end to keep them in. But this doesn't easily slip off, because we're going to be cut off the, cutting off the excess anyway. The next two are the white from the green, so the green white. That's the one next to the green, paired with the green. That goes in next, but it does not go next to the green. So we'll put this one in first, very carefully. So it's actually on the top with the other white one. And then next to that one, though, we've got to put the blue, the dark blue. So we have to move these around, keep track of the white blue one, in this case with this cable, and we'll put that next to this. So now the blue should be next to the orange. So now I got those four in there. And I will bend them all over so we don't lose position at this point. So this one is the white blue. We have the green by itself, and we have the brown and the white brown still together over here. The next, the next one is going to be the white blue. So this one that's dangling by itself will go here, and that will go next to the green white. So now we should have three of them lined up at the top together. As you can see here, three white ones. And then underneath that goes the green, the one that's dangling here. So we'll put that in right next to where the blue was. Okay. And then the last two are the brown, white, and the brown. They're together. So we'll put the brown, white in first, and then we'll put the brown in. Now you can check yourself here real easily by looking at it carefully, and you should see all of the colored ones at the top, and all of the white ones, on some cable it would be striped white ones, matching the corresponding colored connector, they're all together as well. So now we have them all there. So we gotta push this down a little bit, because we only want about three quarters of an inch between the base of this and that. 
Okay, and once we get that, we're going to take the cutters and make sure you don't cut the plastic. I've done that once. Put it up against the plastic and try to cut all the wires evenly across like that. And don't let this fall out. These things will fall out if you're not careful. And it looks, like, it looks like I'm a little bit off, so I have to do another little adjustment here to get it right. And now they're all even across the top. Okay, push it down so we don't have them pop out on us. And that's about right. Now it's going to go into the cable with all the white ones on top. And this actual locking mechanism at the top, this is going to go in like this into the cable itself. And we push that all the way back into it. And if we did it right, we should see the ends of the, the plastic connector inside all the way up to the end and all of the ends of the wire sticking off there. And we do have this set up now so that we can wrap this around properly and lock it in place as a second step of crimping it. But the first crimp is going to crimp the front part of this, and it's going to do so right in here. Now, this crimping tool that I have can be either CAT7 or CAT6 or below. Right now I have the little screw on CAT7. Now you know that that's right if when I, let me unlock this. This has got a locking pin here. Push that and unlock it. You do not see the back part here, this little knife right here at the back part of the tool. You do not see that entering the connector because that's what would close the back part of the connector on a non-CAT7 cable. This one is a CAT7 cable, right? So now that I have that, it's, all, it's pushed in. Try to push it and hold it in a little bit. We see all of the colored wires in there, right? We can actually see the colors in there, so we're good. Now we take this, and you'll see it really only goes one way. There's a, a place to plug, plug in the RJ45 right here. So I will take it and push that in here until it locks all the way in place. And then I will do it with one solid crimp, and I hold it. I'm going to hold it for three or four seconds. And then I should be able to put, don't pull it push it out from the other end. And now we should be crimped. I should see the ends of the copper wire right up in there if I've done it right. And we'll find out when I test the cable for sure if I did it right. I do see the orange way over to the end, so now the orange is where it should be. That's a good indicator according to this diagram with the cable being held this way. And I see the brown all the way to the right. Okay, so we're looking good. You can't reuse these, so if I messed this up, I would have to redo it again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shield, I'm going to wrap it a little bit around, and then this part here for this cable has to be bent up by hand, bend it into position like that. And this is going to now crimp the wire together. And guess what this tool can also do? It has in here a crimper for that. Okay? So what I will do is I will take this and I will get it started. I will bend them in towards the cable a little bit, and then I will take this tool and I will put it in place here, up into this area here, and just push it until it crimps that little cable together. Not too tight, it just has to wrap it around. And there we are. It's now got the restrain relief here. The other connectors for the CAT6, the strain release of part of the connector, and that was the part that gets pushed in on the plastic. This one does not have that. Now I will cut the excess of the metal sheathing, and that should be good. So now we have the RJ45 end completed. Now the last thing I need to do, the boot that's sitting down here in the cable, way over here that I put down before we got started with cutting the cable, I'm going to push this up to meet the connector. And I'll push the connector into it until it locks in place. So now we have a protector for the little latch and the cable at base itself. And we don't, it looks like rather close to what you would buy, right? Okay, I went ahead and peeled back the wires for the keystone jack connections. This particular keystone jack that I got is a CAT7, specifically for CAT7. It's a shielded jack as well, it's all metallic. It comes with a tie wrap, a white tie wrap, which is what you use to seal off and hold the cable in at the end. So we do that step at the end. When you open this up, and it could be locked to so be careful and then you have to take like a, a small screwdriver and sort of ply it open from the bottom here. But it was already open in my case. You have this white piece that you have to take out. 
of the middle. And what this piece is, it actually locks each of the wires down into the jack. Now it's meant to be pushed down in this way. So you have the high part that has to go to this side, to the back of it, and the low part that's here goes to the front of it because they have the reverse connections here. So what you do here is they're all color coded. You'll see white, you'll see the orange white, you'll see the orange, you'll see the blue white, you'll see the blue, and you have to just put them in the appropriate holes. And the same thing for the other side, but it's going to push, all of them are going to push in from this end here. So even those holes, we push them through. I'll give you an example. Let me put ahead, let me go ahead and do the first two. Now there is separate instructions here that I printed out that came with this jack and I blew it up and printed it out. And that gives step by step for using this. As you may notice that I did not peel back the aluminum shielding all the way. You have to leave about a quarter of an inch of aluminum sheathing there because that's going to contact with the jack case and thereby provide the shielding grounded from point to point, okay, from, from case to connector. So let's follow this along. Let's hold it this way. That's how it's going to go in. And we want the white orange to be in the first two. So we'll, oops, I'm sorry. Let me, let me go ahead and push the, um, the lower ones first, the greens and the brown. So I'm going to take the greens. I'm going to do those first. You got to do them. You see the one with the dot? That means it's the, it's the green white. Okay, as opposed to the solid one, that means the green. So we push that in in that order. We push them from the bottom here, through those little holes here, and those are going to go all the way through and come out the other side. See that? See how they came out the other side here? And I'll bend them over. Oh, I'll just leave them like that for now, make sure I hold them in properly. And then we have to do the brown and the brown white next. So I sort of bend this to the side, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the brown and the brown white through the appropriate holes in the bottom. A little bit of finger manipulation here. Get the brown and the brown white. Push those through, and they come out the other side. Right, so now we got four of them in there. They're in the right order. Full green, the green white, the full brown, the brown white. So let's just hold it from that perspective so I can keep the wires in there. The next ones I'm gonna do is orange, white, and then orange. They go here at the top. Let me put these out of the way for a second. So they go at holes that's way up here at the very top of it. So these here have to be pushed down into it. They don't slide through it. So I gotta push those down into the holes here. I'm just gonna use my nail. And I gotta do the same thing for the blue and the blue white. Push them down into the little connector here until they get locked in place. I gotta twist them a little bit here. These two are twisted the wrong way. So I'll do the blue first. Push them down into place. The nail seems to work. And I can push it, just gonna push it up in the front here until you get it locked in place. So now it's they're down in there. What I can then do is I gotta cut off the excess of the wires. So I'll start by cutting off the excess on these. Then I'll cut off the excess on these. Okay, now that they're all in place, I can take this and I gotta turn it upside down and put it into, you see the actual spokes for the connectors are down in there. So I gotta push it down from the front and push back, and then I push the whole thing down. And it's actually seating the wires into the connectors, and it locks in place. Okay, now these you can reuse. These are not gonna, they're not like the, the RJ45 connectors. If I did it wrong and I get a problem, I can redo these, but we'll see. So for now, I'm just going to lock it in place, and I'm going to snap it closed. It locked it with little, little latches there. I may have to use a screwdriver to open it up again. I will not put the thing on until I test it. So let me get a tester so I can test this out properly. So what I have here is my cable tester from Klein. And I'm going to need a jumper. It has two separate things. It's a satellite section to it. But I'm going to wind up with two females when it looks at a keystone. So I'm going to need a wire connector between those two. Make sure this is shielded wire, right? Cat7. I made sure I used a Cat7 jumper, okay? Because you want to have the shielding as well, right? So this is a manufactured one. So we'll put this in. If you notice, there is a shielded thing. So this tester checks the shielding too. So we'll put this in here. And then we'll put this end into the end of the keystone. You'll hear it snap in place, okay? And the other end of the cable, I will put into the tester here until it snaps in place. And then I will hit the network cable test and let's see what we get.
pass first time all the connectors so I guess I've done this enough to where I can actually get it to work now that that's tested I can take it off of here and then the last step here is to put this onto we got to make sure we get the shielding on there so now let's get this guy locked down into it then I'm gonna pull it tight by hand don't use a tool for that so that gives it the strain relief that it needs back there right and then I can cut this off and we are done I have a cat 7 cable